Hello students, I am Dinesh Udupi. This is uh, session 41 of Molecular Biology, Evolution and Ethology paper. In this session, we are going to continue with the studies of adaptations. And uh, in this session, let us discuss about arboreal, desert and deep sea adaptations in animals. We already uh, understood what is adaptation. So adaptation is defined as the process where a species or an organism gradually becomes better acclimated or adjusted to its environment. You know, the animals have to survive and uh, for the survival, it is necessary to adjust uh, to the surrounding environment. And uh, if they don't adjust to the surrounding environment, then they are not uh, going to survive for a long time and they may get uh, extinct. So individually they are going to die but uh, when it comes to the species they are going to get extinct. Uh, they are going to be removed from the nature. So therefore adaptation is very important for a species to survive in the nature and to continue in the nature. Uh, we studied uh, the aquatic and the olent adaptations in the previous session. In this session uh, let us start with arboreal adaptation and uh, the example we are going to study is chameleon. Arboreal adaptation refers to the adaptation uh, shown by the animals which live on the tree. So simply I can say it is life on trees. So the adaptations shown to the life on trees. Uh, you have seen many animals living on the trees, right? Birds, monkeys, then uh, many reptiles, etc. And uh, I'm mainly talking about the higher animals. So don't consider the insects and other things which live on the uh, trees. Uh, they have nothing to do with this arboreal adaptation. But we have to consider the larger animals like mammals, reptiles, etc. which live on the trees, birds, mammals and reptiles. Uh, you just think of the life on the trees. Uh, you remember there are uh, so many different kinds of arboreal animals. Some animals which, which spend uh, life on the trees for a very short period, right? So they will go to the land, they will, uh, they will uh, uh, go to the trees and they will come back to the land, etc. That's what you see regularly. But you think of uh, rainforests uh, where you find very large trees in a thick forest there are some groups of mammals which live entirely on the trees. So they will spend their entire life on the trees itself. They will never come to the land. So they have uh, well developed arboreal adaptations and uh, there are so many birds which will sit only on the trees. They show arboreal adaptation. As we are discussing the life on trees, so life on trees uh, has some uh, specific challenges. One is the animal has to uh, sit or move on the branches. You know, branches are comparatively smaller. You cannot expect the stability of the land on the tree. So the animals are moving on the branches. So therefore, they must have the adaptation to hold tightly to the branches. They must not fall uh, from the tree because it may be fatal. So one of the important adaptation uh, for the life on trees is the holding mechanism. Firm, uh, firmly uh, sitting or firmly moving on the branches. So that is one adaptation uh, they have. And another important adaptation is most of the animals which are adapted for arboreal life, they have camouflage. Means their body coloration just matches with the background the trees, uh, leaves, etc. so that the animal is uh, hardly visible to the enemies. That is another change. And uh, the animals normally move from one plant to the other plant or one branch to the other branch of the same plant. So they have the mechanism uh, to stay stably or uh, to stay firmly on the branch or move firmly from one branch to the other branch or one branch, one tree, one tree to the other tree. Uh, here we have taken the example of chameleon uh, which is well suited for the life on the trees. And what are the adaptations we see in the chameleon which help uh, this chameleon to survive on the tree? Ability to change body color. As I told you, 
its ability to body uh, change body color is protective in nature uh, it, it is very difficult to locate a chameleon because it will change its body color to the background uh, coloration limbs and digits to hold branches of course as i told you all animals which are adapted for life on tree they have their limbs and their digits are designed in such a way whether it is birds or uh, this chameleon or the mammals which uh, live on the tree like monkeys chimp, uh, and other orangutan and other animals right the hands or the limbs have very strong uh, digits by which they can hold the branches here also the chameleon limbs and digits are designed in such a way that they can hold the branch very firmly and remember almost all arboreal animals they have very sharp claws uh, on their digits because the claws will help the animal to hold the branches firmly and in case of uh, this particular chameleon the eye socket is movable uh, it can move each eye independently like any other animal it is having two eyes but one ability of the chameleon is independent of each eye i mean other eye each eye can rotate uh, separately so that ability is there and uh, it is very helpful for the chameleon to observe or uh, to follow the movement of its foot i mean another insect which it is going to catch without moving the body so that the prey is not alerted right then uh, protrusible and sticky tongue as i told you on the land the animals have the uh, freedom of moving from one point to the other point but here the animal is sitting on a branch and it has to move along with that branch only right moving from one branch to the other branch is a very highly unstable activity so to avoid that movement it is having very long and sticky tongue so whenever it finds the insect you know it mainly feeds on the insect so it will uh, the tongue will come out of the mouth which is called protrusible and it is sticky also it will just touch the insect and the insect will attach to the tongue and it will take the insect into its mouth then another character is prehensile tail you can see here this uh, tail which is curved or coiled you can say this type of tail is called prehensile tail prehensile tails help the animal to hold on to the branches uh, using its tail they are going to coil around the branches and uh, they can maintain balance uh, when they are moving or when they are sitting on the branches of the tree so these are some of the adaptations which we find in the chameleon you remember chameleon has its own specific uh, characters but we have to see the common characters of all arboreal animals which i already mentioned in the beginning the second uh, type of adaptation we are going to study is desert adaptation you know desert ecosystem is uh, one of the most harsh type of ecosystem on the earth deserts represent the most unfavorable conditions of any kind of ecosystem so you know there are so many different type of ecosystem probably desert and uh, the extreme cold areas of the earth like polar areas so they are the places which represent extreme climatic conditions uh, desert is represented by very hot climate condition and uh, scarcity of water scarcity of food or plants and only sand you know deserts are vast areas uh, different deserts have different geographical uh, uh, sizes uh, you heard about savanna uh, savanna i'm sorry sahara and in india we have uh, the thar desert the climate is very hot during the day time right it is intolerable uh, the animals cannot survive because of the extreme temperature so the temperature normally crosses 40 degree celsius which is very dangerous for normal animals the animals will die uh, because of hot climatic condition and uh, they will die because of dehydration and it is very difficult to find the water you don't find water in the deserts uh, the water is restricted to some uh, isolated areas 
which you can call them as oases but most of the desert you don't find water so you cannot think of life without water if there is no water plants are not going to grow if there are no plants then how you can expect the animals which feed on the plants so absence of water leads to absence of plants and then the absence of uh, animals so therefore in the desert you rarely find life forms and uh, scarcity, uh, scarcity of food that's what i told you scarcity of water you know rainfall average uh, annual rainfall is very very less there are some parts of the desert right which don't receive rain for many decades you just forget how many days uh, of the year they will receive rain no i am talking about the rain coming uh, after a gap of 10 years or 20 years so there are some places on the desert which do not receive rain for many many years so you cannot expect life there so this is a very harsh condition but still we find life i told you life is very difficult so life forms are very less but not completely absent there are some animals which are adapted to these harsh conditions and they survive in the desert also you know desert uh, is characterized by the presence of animals like scorpions snakes and when it comes to the mammals uh, camel is the most important animal so here uh, we will study one lizard first and then we will move on to the camel phrynosoma uh, this is a lizard which is found in the deserts of uh, some countries it is a lizard found in desert it is, uh, they are very sluggish animals now this sluggish nature is an adaptation because if they move very fast you know the animals if they move very fast they need more energy and energy comes at a cost to produce energy you need the food the source of energy and uh, when the animals move very fastly they are going to lose more water from the body so this is a special condition where the animal cannot waste energy the animal cannot lose water therefore they have adapted for a sluggish uh, type of life and uh, one of the very important adaptations you find in desert is the animals prefer to come out in the night and they they will try to avoid the day because the day is too hot the sand is too hot the animal cannot simply move on the sand it's it's very uh, hot so they will come out in the night uh, that is one adaptation they have and sluggish movement is the adaptation shown by this phrynosoma right this is the phrynosoma they have protective body covering or camouflage which provides them protection against predators this is what i told you uh, camouflage is uh, the body coloration which matches with the background of the animal most of the animals especially the animals which are prey i mean the animals which are hunted by other animals which have enemies so to protect from uh, to get protection from the enemies their body color matches with the background so they are very difficultly seen by the enemy it is very difficult for the enemy or predator to detect them so that is called camouflage here this animal is also having a perfect camouflage you can see the body color if it is moving in the sand or if it is standing still in the sand background it is very difficult uh, to make out that there is an animal so that is the body covering and its hard scales also protect them from the attack of predators its skin is very hard and uh, the scales are very hard the body is completely covered by scales and uh, these hard scales protect them even if it is attacked by a predator the predator will be having a tough time to cut the body right uh, because its hard scales will prevent the enemy from attacking it they collect water while raining or also collect drops of water from the air they don't get water water is one of the most uh, precious uh, thing uh, they will find in the desert whenever there is a rain of course 
uh, if there is a slight rain, it will bend its body. Uh, it has an adaptation. You just think of it. So it will bend its body so that the scales uh, will open up. And uh, when the rain falls on its body, you know, the rainfall is very less. The water drops which fall on the body and it's opening its body in such a way that the scales will uh, make way for the drops to enter and the water drops will move uh, up to the mouth. So in this way, it uses its body to catch the rainwater, right? Uh, why it is doing it? You think of terrestrial animals, I mean the animals which are living in other areas. When the rain comes, the rainwater will be there somewhere and they can go and drink. But this is living in desert. There is sand. If the rain comes, the rain will fall on the sand and this, the water will be gone within no time within seconds so it cannot go and search for the rainwater after few seconds so therefore its mechanism is to collect the water we humans can collect rainwater by using some utensils right plastic uh, buckets or some other things but these animals they don't have such materials right it uses its body as a mug to collect rainwater just think of the adaptation Right? Whenever the rain is coming, it will bend its body and the water droplets will fall on the body and all the water droplets will collect and they move to the mouth and it will drink that water. So this is how the adaptation, a perfect adaptation of using the rainwater. The skin covered with scales prevents evaporation. Once uh, the water which is present inside the body, uh, that has to be preserved because the climate is very hot and uh, there is a tendency of the body to lose water in the form of evaporation. So it must prevent evaporation of water from the body. And that is achieved by a very thick skin and uh, that skin which is covered with scales. Uh, that's about the desert adaptations you find in uh, the reptile called Phrynosoma. Then we have this camel. Uh, one of the most famous animal which is iconic of desert uh, ecosystem. Camel is a large sized mammal which is typically adapted for the life in desert. And uh, this is the only source of uh, transportation for the uh, humans who live in the desert areas. They are large and uh, they have very large and flat feet. So let us study some adaptations of the camel. There are many adaptations. Uh, we'll just see the important adaptations of the camel, camel which help the animal to survive in desert conditions. Large flat feet. Uh, this large flat feet helps the animal to move in sand. You know sand uh, is not as firm as the soil or uh, normal uh, uh, terrestrial environment right so the sand uh, doesn't provide better friction so therefore they have a very flat feet i think you have uh, you all have experienced you cannot walk so easily on the sand it's very difficult to walk on the beach because it's a sand you cannot think of running uh, you just compare yourself running on the tar road and a beach filled with sand so uh, to avoid that problem they have a very large and flat feet thick fur on the top of the body for shade and thin fur elsewhere to allow easy heat loss uh, their fur is uh, uh, the body fur is in such a way that it provides shade on the top of the body and on other part of the body uh, it can easily lose heat because it has to lose heat it is living in a hot climatic condition and uh, it has to maintain the correct body temperature. A large surface area to volume ratio to maximize heat loss. Uh, surface area to volume. Uh, this ratio is very high in camel. You know, we lose heat uh, through our skin. Body loses heat through different mechanisms. For example, we lose heat from the air which comes out of our uh, respiratory system and we lose 
uh, water i am sorry we lose heat through the mouth also and one of the best method of losing heat is through the skin surface especially by sweating you know we lose lot of heat so skin is the organ through which the heat the excessive heat is lost and uh, the ratio uh, i mean the surface area to body volume ratio is very high in camel so that it efficiently loses that extra heat because it lives in a very hot climatic condition the ability to go for a long time without water this animal can drink water whenever the water is available it will drink uh, you can say stomach full of water and it can survive for many days right uh, without water so that is how it is adjusted they lose very little water through urination and perspiration like other mammals you know uh, we lose lot of water in the form of urine and uh, perspiration i mean the sweat camels have the mechanism to reduce the loss of water because they produce concentrated urine and uh, the perspiration rate is also very less they lose heat through the body surface skin but not by the mechanism of sweating and uh, cooling right uh, without sweating they lose the heat through the skin the ability to tolerate body temperature up to 40 degrees celsius uh, most of the animals you know normal body temperature of human being is 38 degrees celsius and if it reaches uh, 40 degree uh, normally we call it as a fever condition but the camel is capable of tolerating a body temperature of up to 42 degrees celsius slit like nostrils and two rows of eyelashes to help keep out sand because this animal lives in the uh, desert and uh, desert storms sand storms are very common so to protect its eye and its nostrils from the sand uh, it has these mechanisms so camel you can say is one of the best adapted animal for desert life uh, its theory is i mean uh, uh, its uh, survival strategy is uh, like this uh it can tolerate high temperature it will drink as much of water as possible when it is available it will prevent the loss of water from the body and it will reduce the water loss by some behavioral changes also like uh, always taking rest in the shade and trying to move only during the uh, night so these are some behavioral and physiological adaptations and structural adaptations which help this animal uh, to survive uh, very effectively in the desert ecosystem and lastly we have this deep sea adaptation deep sea means uh, very deep parts of the ocean sunlight will not penetrate uh, to the deeper parts of the ocean normally we don't find much life in the deep sea but a very rare and a very uh, sparse life is found in the deep sea uh, some of the fishes have been uh, collected and uh, studied from these deep sea oceans it is very difficult to study the deep sea ecosystem because uh, it's impossible or it is very difficult to go there uh, because of the conditions what are those conditions one is low temperature remember the temperature uh, becomes very low there uh, very cold and uh, this cold temperature is not favorable for the life of many animals normal fish cannot survive in that very cold temperature and absence of light it is pitch dark complete darkness in the deep sea and calmness of water you know the water which is nearer to the surface it has disturbances some currents moving and disturbances etc but deep sea is totally calm no sound no movement no disturbance no vibrations etc it's it's like a, a total stillness there is no life there is no movement there is no sound just imagine right you just imagine a condition uh, where you don't have any sense organs so that condition exists 
in the deep sea. Absence of phytoplankton and other producers. The main problem is for any life to exist, there must be a food chain in an ecosystem. You must have producers. Who are producers? Normally, the green plants are the producers. And uh, the green plants, they need sunlight. Here, sunlight is absent. Therefore, there are no producers. Since there are no producers, you cannot expect consumers. Then how some fishes, which are called deep sea fishes, survive? As I told you, scientists have discovered some very special or uh, very uh, rare kind of fishes in the deep sea uh, oceans. Then how they survive? The food debris which falls from the uh, height, I mean the surface areas of the ocean, that is the food, right? And uh, they use those uh, food items and they survive. As I told you, uh, one more very important uh, point I missed here is very high pressure. Deep sea has very high pressure where uh, you, you cannot uh, think of a person like a human being going to the deep sea without any protective gear. Our body will get ripped off. So to go to that depth and study the animals, you need very special equipments. You have to have a, a vessel which is very thick, made up of very strong metal. Otherwise, your body will be ripped off by the high pressure. The pressure is so high, it is going to burst the blood vessels and body. That is the condition and in that condition, some fishes survive. And uh, some of the adaptations uh, which are found in that deep sea, they show fluorescence. Uh, most of the deep sea fishes, they have this ability to produce light. You know, fluorescence is a uh, phenomenon where the light is emitted by the cells. They produce light mainly to attract the prey. Who are prey? Some other animals. Uh, it's very difficult. As I told you, mainly they depend upon the debris which falls from the above. Then they have very flat body. Right? This is an adjustment or adaptation to the high pressure. They avoid high pressure by laterally compressing their body. Remember, dorsoventral compression is not going to help. They have to compress their body laterally. And uh, since there is no light, uh, pigmentation is not there. Therefore, normally they have a transparent body. And they have very large mouth. Uh, compared to other parts of the body, They have their mouth is very, very big. So these are some of the adaptations you find in deep sea fishes, which are commonly called deep sea adaptations, which exhibit extreme climatic conditions. Uh, it's more uh, harsher than the desert. The desert is comparatively very good if you compare the deep sea uh, climatic condition and desert. So desert is heaven because in the deep sea, no light, uh, no food, very cold climatic condition, very high pressure, total calmness. So these are the conditions which exist in the deep sea. That's what we studied in this particular session. We understood arboreal adaptation, desert adaptation and deep sea adaptation in a brief manner. So that's all for this particular session. Thank you.